Okay, so we stopped when we got to question 13. I paused you there because we start coming across equations which have sigmas on both sides. And Marco basically just told me how he's going to be able to do these questions. He says, well, obviously you'll just work out what's going on with this side. You'll work out what's going on with this side and then you'll solve the equation. But I just want to point out a few things um, about how you solve these equations because they're going to be even bigger and more complicated than equations you will have seen at GCSE. So let's just dive in straight with what the left-hand side should be. This one is so easy. Left-hand side, it would just be? Um, a sixth um, bracket, not n squared. No, a sixth n. n. N plus one, N plus two. Two, two N plus one. Right, Andrew, after about five tries, we got there. <laughs> <laughs> now what the, do you mean, Mindy? <laughs> the next bit is nine from R equals one to N plus one of R plus one from R equals one to N plus one. Just doing that like extra bit of breaking it down. So I have a sixth N, N plus one, two N plus one mm. is equal to, what's this bit going to be? Nine over two. Nine over two, n. n plus one. N plus one. And what's this bit? N plus one. Plus n plus one. And you'll see why I'm putting it in brackets in a second. Now, I want to... Yeah, good. I'm going to solve this equation now. And n plus one features in all of these things now. Now, because n plus one features in all of these things, um, Marco said I could take it out. And I kind of agree with the idea of it being taken out. But you could also say I'm going to divide by n plus one. Or you could also say I'm going to cancel by n plus one. But we have to be really careful with equations. Because if you cancel by this, you're actually removing one of the potential solutions. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So if I cancel by n plus one, I'd have to replace that with a one because I'm dividing it by n plus one. This is actually removing one of the solutions. One of the solutions that is being removed is that m plus 1, whatever I've cancelled by, can be equal to 0 for this particular thing. Why is that true? Why would this also be a solution? Why would n being minus 1 make this equation true? Because then everything would be 0. Good. If n was equal to minus 1, then this would be 0, this would be 0, and this would be 0. So you're actually just saying 0 equals 0, which is technically a solution to the equation. So generally, in maths, if you ever have an equation and you decide to just cancel things out, you're actually getting rid of a solution. So if I just do another example, like if you said x squared plus 3x equals x cubed, if you divide everything by x, so that you have x plus 3 equals x squared, one of the solutions that you have just worked out is that x plus x equals 0 is also a solution to this equation. So just be warned, if you ever cancel anything out, it is a potential solution, and you should just jot down at the side of the page what that solution is that you've got. So is n equals minus 1 a solution to this equation? No. Why not? Because n... Um... Wait, no, because it has to be a natural number. Oh, yeah. Good. n equals minus 1 is a solution to this equation, but it is not a solution to this equation because it doesn't make sense to go from r equals 1 to minus 1. So we're really looking for a particular kind of answer to this now. We are looking for values of n that are positive. And what else? Positive, more than 1. Well, it could be 1. It could be from 1 to 1 and from 1 to 2. Integers. So we are looking for values of n which are members of integers that are positive. Have you ever seen this language before? Yeah. You could say that it's a member of the natural numbers as well. You could say where n is a natural number, like this. Okay. Integers, the reason it's z is because I think there's a word in German that begins with a z that's to do with integers or whole numbers or being whole. Um, so if you ever see this kind of language, we need our solutions to the equation to be positive integers or to be natural numbers. We cannot accept values for n being less than zero. That is not going to work for these equations. Hence, this solution is not going to be one of our actual solutions. But I needed to point out to you that if you cancel through by something, please don't just throw it away. Please think the thing I've cancelled could be equal to zero. Andrew, do you have a question? Yeah. If it wasn't m, but like, so, but you would change something like m minus one, then yeah. would there actually be a solution? Yes, true. If all of these things here, if everything had like an n minus, I'm going to do something different. If they all had n minus three, 
if you just decided to cancel the n minus 3 and not include it, you've missed out the solution that n is equal to 3, and you'll be punished for that. You won't get full marks in the question. So whatever you cancel, make sure that it could be equal to 0, because if it, could, if it was equal to 0, you'd have 0 equals 0 plus 0, which is still a solution to the equation. Okay? The other way around that, I'm just going to go back to the kind of algebraic version that I had. I think I had x cubed, or something like this, x, x cubed plus 2x equals x squared. Now, you could just cancel by x. Or another way of saying this is you could put everything all onto one side to make it equal 0. So I'd have x cubed minus x squared plus 2x equals 0. Mm -hmm. Then I could do what on the left-hand side? You could remove an x. I could remove an x by by factorizing. If I do x, x squared minus x plus 2, clearly this times this, one of these things must be equal to 0. So either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. So I could, if I wanted to, take all of this information, put it on one side, factorize out the m plus 1, and then say, well, m plus 1 could be equal to 0. Or I could just know that if I'm cancelling, then I have to be careful that the thing I've cancelled with could be equal to zero. And this will pop up in various areas of maths, OK? So let's um, actually just see what we've got left. So I, don't, I personally don't like dealing with fractions. I, just, they, I find them just annoying if I could deal with integers. So can you suggest what I could multiply everything by to remove this? Yeah, I'm going to multiply everything by 6. And you have to make sure you multiply everything by 6. So I'm just going to have n, 2n plus 1. What's 9 over 2 multiplied by 6? Then it would be um, 64 over 2, so 27. So it's going to be 27n. Do not forget to multiply this by 6, plus six. which is going to be plus 6. OK, have I done that right? Yeah, everything's multiplied by 6. OK, now I'm going to just expand the brackets. So I get 2n squared, because there's no common factors. 2n squared plus n equals 27n plus 6. What should I do? All on one side because it's a quadratic. So that's 2n squared minus 26n minus six. minus 6. I think I did do something wrong. Did I? No. It's just different to when I was looking at it just now. So if I half everything, I've got n squared minus 13n minus 3 equals 0. What did I just do when I was looking at this? Let me just quickly remind myself of what I've written down here. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. Where did the mistake come up? Now you can see how I've done a mistake as well. 6n n plus 1 plus n plus 1. Ah, oh, OK, I've seen where the mistake is, of course. OK, can anyone spot? I've seen where the mistake is. It happened quite a, a, quite a while earlier on. It happened in this line here. Is it that you didn't times n? No, you didn't. So I knew this wasn't making so much sense. Let's get rid of this. Oh, wait, n plus 1. Yes, there. look, it goes up to n plus 1. And we just went straight in with this. So this should have been something different. This should have been 9 over 2 n plus, n, plus, n, plus n, plus 2. n plus 1, n plus 2. So all that stuff we were saying about cancelling still, still applies because there's an n plus 1 everywhere. But we've got this extra n plus 2 instead, which is going to affect some of the things that we have. So we're still going to multiply everything by 6. Something wasn't making sense there, but now it will do. So we've got n, 2n plus 1. Then this was 27n plus 2 plus 6. Make sure that everything is multiplied by 6. So that's 2n squared plus n equals 27n plus 54 plus 6. So that's 2n squared minus 26n minus 60 equals 0. So that's because we misinterpreted this bit at the beginning. Divide it all by 2. Now we're going to have some solutions to this. What can this factorise to, do we think? Um, minus 15 to 2. Mm. Minus 15. Minus I thought that one at first, but that wouldn't yeah. work if you think about it. Minus 15 and plus 2. So our solutions are, from earlier on, n equals minus 1, 
n equals minus 2, and n equals, whoops, 15. But n is a member of the natural numbers, or you could have written that n is a positive integer. Hence, n is equal to 15. And there's a clue in the question that we were only allowed to have one answer. Where's the clue in the question? Find the, value. find the value of n that satisfies this. You cannot have more than one value. So if you gave three of them, it wouldn't have worked. If this top bit didn't exist, if it was just from here onwards, there are three solutions to this equation, minus 1, minus 2, and 15. But because of the context of the question, there is only one solution, which is that n is equal to 15. Um, if you did sort of delete the answer as n equals minus 1, n equals minus 2, and n equals 15, yep. How many marks would you do? One mark okay. for that. One mark for that bit there, okay? And I personally, even though this one isn't a solution, I want you to tell me, I want you to write down somewhere that that is a solution. I knew something wasn't making sense there. It's very easy to make these kinds of mistakes, especially when you're so used to using the formula. If there's something different up there, make sure that we're using it. So the things that use these kind of skills, where there's going to be a sigma on both sides, Question 13 and question 14 from exercise 3b. And from the mixed exercise, which is just all sorts of questions from this chapter, questions 8, 9, and 10 all use that as well. Okay? So we're going to do some, we've only got about 10 minutes, but we'll do maybe just question 13 for now.